Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. I'm going to be giving you a preview for the Man United vs Crystal Palace game. It's at Old Trafford, it's this Saturday the 4th of February, it's a 3 o'clock kickoff. In the reverse fixture, Manchester United drew 1-1 with Crystal Palace at Selhurst Park. Michael Alisi scored a brilliant free kick in stoppage time, so he rescued a point for Crystal Palace. Bruno Fernandes scored for Manchester United in that game. Manchester United beat Crystal Palace at Old Trafford last season 3-1. Manchester United are coming into this game on the back of a 2-0 win against Nottingham Forest in the Carabao Cup semi-final second leg at Old Trafford. It was 5-0 on aggregate. You know, Manchester United are in to the Carabao Cup final and Man United will be playing Newcastle. It is Newcastle's first Wembley final since 1999. You know, after the 2-0 win against Nottingham Forest, Eric Ten Hag said it's good to reach the final, but it's about winning it. And he said... Winning against Newcastle will be tough. The goals in the second leg against Nottingham Forest came from Anthony Martial. You know, he scored his sixth goal of the season. He's now equaled David Beckham's record. Martial's just returned from injury. And Man United's second goal came from Fred. He nudged into an empty net with his knee. So there were the goals. Uh, don't forget, Fred came on in the cup win against Reading and scored a good flick. Marcus Rashford provided both assists. You know, Marcus Rashford scored... A wonderful solo strike in the first leg against Forrest. Don't forget Rashford was denied that record goal against Reading. He had a goal ruled out by VAR because Wout Weghorst was offside in the build-up. Uh, Man United... I've obviously got players missing. Um, obviously, Diego Delo is still out with injury. That's why Anwan Basaka has been playing a lot of games. Uh, as you all know, Christine Eriksson is ruled out with an ankle injury until April or early May. So he's out for around three to four months. Donny van der Beek, he's out for the rest of the season with an injury. Uh, Scott McTominay, you know, he's been out with a knock. So they're the players Man United have got missing. Uh, Crystal Palace, they drew their last game with Newcastle. Nil, nil. The players Crystal Palace have got, uh, they've got the likes of Michael Olaisi, Wilfred Zaha. Uh, Wilfred Zaha has been out with injury. And Wilfred Zaha is one of the best players Crystal Palace have got. He's a former Manchester United player. The reason we let him go because, you know, he didn't get in the team that much. 
It was actually Alex Ferguson's last signing before he announced his retirement. Uh, Jordan Ayew, I also rate him. Odson Edouard, Crystal Palace got him from Celtic. John Philippe Mateta. Uh, Will Hughes, Crystal Palace got him from Watford. Uh, Jeffrey Schlupp, Luka Milojevic, Nathan Ferguson, Nathan Ferguson is out with injury at the moment. James McArthur, he's also injured. Joe Tim Anderson is injured. Uh, Palace have Chris Richards, they got him from Bayern Munich, he's a defender. Uh, they recently got Albert Laconga on loan from Arsenal. Uh, James Tonkins, Joe Ward, Nathaniel Klein. Nathaniel Klein is a former Liverpool and Southampton player. Uh, one of the goalkeepers Crystal Palace have got is Sam Johnstone. Sam Johnstone, don't forget, is a former Man United goalkeeper let me put into the equation that Crystal Palace have lost players they lost Jack Butland you know he's at Man United on loan until the end of the season the reason we got Jack Butland on loan is because Martin Dubravka's loan got terminated last year uh, they lost Martin Kelly. They lost Robert Street. He's at Shrewsbury. Uh, they lost Christian Benteke. He went to DC United. Andros Townsend left Palace quite a few years ago. He went to Everton. Avon wan -Bissaka, they lost him back in the summer of 2019. Manchester United got him. So, yeah, they are... Players at Crystal Palace have lost. The Crystal Palace manager is Patrick Vieira. You know, Vieira has been the Palace manager for like a year and a half. He got appointed in as the Crystal Palace manager back in July 2021. He's under contract with Crystal Palace until 2024. Before Vieira managed Nice in France, before then managed New York City and managed Man City's under 19s. Uh, before Crystal Palace had Roy Hodgson, he left Crystal Palace, was it the season before last? And when he left Palace, he went to become the Watford manager. But yeah, um, I am expecting Manchester United to beat Crystal Palace at Old Trafford. Uh, Man United do play Leeds United twice in four days after Crystal Palace. We're doing very well at home. You know, you can say Old Trafford is becoming a fortress again. Reflecting on that win against Forest in the second leg of the Carabao Cup semi-final, that was 12 successive home wins for Man United in all competitions. <laughs> um, as you all know, Man United recently signed Marcel Sabitzer on loan until the end of the season. Uh, there's no option to buy or obligation to buy. The reason we got Marcel Sabitza is because of Christine Eriksen's injury. Um, I am expecting Marcel Sabitza to make his debut soon. You know, Eric Ten Hag has said um, he's got a good attitude and he's a great player. You know, he's well known for his versatility. He was out of favourite by Munich with Sabitza. 
Uh, Bayern Munich got him back in 2021 from Leipzig. Bayern Munich paid around 16 million euros. When he officially signed for Bayern Munich, he signed a four-year deal. So he's under contract with Bayern Munich until 2025. But um, Man United got three players in on loan back in the January window. We got Sabitzer on loan, Wout Weghorst on loan and Jack Butland on loan. Revert right back to last summer, Ten Hag brought the likes of Terrell Molassi in, Christine Eriksen, Lissandro Martinez, Casemiro, Antin Dubravka. Eric Ten Hag has spent over £200 million as Manchester United manager. You know, he has enjoyed two transfer windows at the club so far. And Ten Hag has let a lot of players go as well. But you can see the progress Eric Ten Hag has made at United. You know, got us to the Carabao Cup final. You know, Ten Hag wants a trophy. He's made that clear. You know, we've not won a domestic trophy for six years. Hopefully we can end that six-year drought when we play Newcastle in the final. He's got us to the fifth round of the FA Cup, where we'll be playing West Ham. And he's got us into the top four in the Premier League. And revert back to the start of this season. I did say Ten Hag's expectations this season is to get Man United a top four finish. And there's been a lot of games this season where I do like the way Eric Ten Hag's approached them. So I've given him a hell of a lot of credit. For that. He has got some decisions wrong in some games. I will admit that. But I've not once. You know criticised Ten Hag. Like I said it's his first full season. He's been a United manager now. For around 10 months. Got appointed in as the United manager in April last year. He's under contract with the club. Until 2025. And he's Man United's fifth permanent manager. Since Ferguson. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you with. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel if you do. Consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.